The topic of this lecture will be the rates of nucleophilic substitution reactions. The mechanism by which a nucleophilic substitution reaction occurs dictates the products that are formed. The mechanism that predominates, SN1 or SN2, is the mechanism that occurs the fastest, the mechanism that has the fastest rate. Therefore, it's useful to be able to predict whether SN1 or SN2 will be fastest with a given set of substrate and nucleophile. What we will discuss in this video are the factors that affect the rate of SN1 and SN2 mechanisms. We will start with the SN2 mechanism. The rate of an SN2 reaction depends on the structure of the nucleophile, the structure of the substrate, and the solvent that the reaction is run in. Remember that the 2 in SN2 stands for bimolecular because the rate determining step involves both the nucleophile and the electrophile. Therefore, it should not be surprising that the structure of the nucleophile and the structure of the electrophile, or the substrate, are important to determining the rate of an SN2 reaction. As we've previously discussed, the solvent affects the nucleophilicity of the nucleophile because of solvation, and so it should not be surprising that the solvent also affects the rate of an SN2 reaction. Now we'll take a closer look at how each of these, the nucleophile, the substrate, and the solvent, affect the rate of an SN2 reaction. Stronger nucleophiles react more quickly. Therefore, stronger nucleophiles increase the rate of an SN2 reaction. A substrate for an SN2 reaction needs to have a good leaving group and also should be sterically unhindered because having bulky groups on the electrophilic carbon prevents the approach of the nucleophile and slows the reaction. Therefore, what we see is that a methyl substrate reacts most quickly, whereas a tertiary substrate reacts most slowly in an SN2 mechanism. Methyl and primary substrates react rapidly in the SN2 mechanism. Secondary substrates react sluggishly and tertiary substrates react so slowly that this reaction tends not to occur in any significant amount. Finally, the solvent that most favors an SN2 mechanism is a polar aprotic solvent. Polar aprotic solvents are capable of solubilizing the reactants in an SN2 reaction. The fact that these solvents are aprotic prevents the weakening of the nucleophile that would occur in a polar protic solvent. Remember that weakening the nucleophile would cause the reaction to slow if it were undergoing an SN2 mechanism. Now we'll look at the factors that affect the rate of an SN1 reaction, the structure of the substrate and the solvent. Remember that the rate determining step of an SN1 reaction only includes the substrate, not the nucleophile. Therefore, the structure of the nucleophile does not affect the rate of an SN1 reaction. A good substrate for an SN1 reaction should have a good leaving group, and just like the SN2 reaction, the substitution of the electrophilic carbon is important in determining the rate. However, we see a trend that is the opposite of what we see with SN2. A more sterically hindered electrophilic carbon speeds up the rate of reaction of an SN1 mechanism. To understand why this is, we need to look at the energetics of the SN1 mechanism. And to do this, it's most easy to draw a reaction coordinate diagram. Remember that the mechanism of an SN1 reaction starts with dissociation of the substrate. The leaving group leaves and a carbocation is formed. Then, in the second step, the nucleophile attacks the carbocation to form the substituted product. This is a two-step process, and so our reaction coordinate diagram will have two activation energies and two transition states. Remember that it's the first step, the formation of the carbocation, that is the rate determining step. This is the step that will have the highest activation energy. We will then form the carbocation intermediate, which will be higher in energy than the reactant or the product. Finally, we'll have the second activation energy that leads us down to the product. This activation energy will be smaller than 
the first activation energy, because the second step is not rate determining. Remember that it's the rate determining step that determines how quickly the overall reaction occurs. The reaction cannot occur any faster than its rate determining step. So anything we can do to lower the activation energy of the rate determining step will speed up the overall reaction. We can speed up the rate determining step by lowering the energy of this transition state, transition state 1. In order to understand how increased substitution around the electrophilic carbon stabilizes the transition state, we need to know what the structure of the transition state is. Using Hammond's postulate, the structure that is most close in energy to transition state 1 will be most close in structure to transition state 1. And the energy of the intermediates is closest in energy to the energy of transition state 1. Therefore, the transition state 1 looks most like the carbocation intermediate. Because transition state 1 resembles the carbocation intermediate, anything that stabilizes the carbocation should also stabilize the transition state. Remember that a carbocation is electron deficient. This carbon does not have a complete octet. Therefore, just like a radical center, the addition of alkyl groups to the electron deficient carbon is stabilizing through the inductive effect. Therefore, the most stable carbocation will be a tertiary carbocation, followed by a secondary carbocation, followed by a primary carbocation, followed by the methyl carbocation. More stable carbocations will be formed through more stable transition states that are lower in energy and will therefore be formed more quickly. Accordingly, we see that the rate of an SN1 reaction is dependent on the substitution of the carbon, that is, the electrophilic carbon, but in the reverse order that we saw for the SN2 reaction. A tertiary substrate will react most quickly, more quickly than a secondary substrate. Primary carbocations are very unstable, and so primary substrates react much, much slower, and methyl substrates basically do not react through the SN1 mechanism. It's also important to note that, just like with the electron-deficient radicals, carbocations can also be resonance-stabilized. Therefore, substrates that have a leaving group adjacent to a double bond will react much more quickly through an SN1 mechanism than those that don't have a leaving group adjacent to a double bond. For example, this substrate forms a resonance-stabilized carbocation. Pause the video and see if you can draw the resonance structure for the carbocation that is formed upon leaving of the bromide. The carbocation that is formed looks like this, and the second resonance contributor looks like this. The presence of resonance stabilization in the carbocation intermediate also lowers the energy of the transition state, speeding up the mechanism of the SN1 reaction. Finally, the solvent that most favors an SN1 mechanism is a polar protic solvent. A polar protic solvent is best at solubilizing the reactants, and it's also best for stabilizing the charged intermediates that are formed in the SN1 mechanism. It also helps to stabilize the transition state that looks like the charged intermediates, lowering the activation energy and speeding up the reaction rate. Polar protic solvents weaken the nucleophile, but since the strength of the nucleophile does not affect the rate of an SN1 reaction, this weakening of the nucleophile doesn't matter.